yoga. Let's begin today by finding a comfortable seated position. And if you find that it's useful for you to add a little height in the form of a yoga block or maybe a small pillow or a folded blanket underneath your hips while we sit for the first few minutes, then go ahead and grab what you need and set yourself up. And remember that once you come into your comfortable seated position, it's important to let your low belly relax and release your tongue down from the roof of your mouth. And then closing your eyes, start to turn your attention inward. And taking a moment to locate your nice, long, tall, neutral spine. Start to turn your attention to your physical body. Noticing whatever is present in your body at this time. And then turning your attention to your breathing. Begin to observe your breath as it rises and falls at your navel. Noticing the way your belly expands each time you inhale and draws back towards your spine each time you exhale. by little, let's begin to expand the inhalations and lengthen out the exhalations. Feeling the ribcage lift each time you inhale. If you have that Ujjayi Pranayama in your practice, forming a slight constriction in the back of your throat, you can begin to add it now. Bringing your palms together in prayer position, Anjali Mudra, at the level of your heart. Let's take a moment to consider your sankalpa, or your intention for your practice today. Take a moment to think about whatever it is you need from your practice to help bring you into a state of harmony, or state of balance today. And then take a moment to consider your longer term intention. That part of your sankalpa, often known as your heart's desire, where do you hope the practice will take you in the long run? See if you can start to feel it in your body right now. Trusting that this practice will serve your highest intention. We'll seal that intention and set the context for the rest of class by chanting Hari Om three times. And feel free to add your voice as much or as little as you like. Inhale. Hari.
Let's come forward off of any props we might be sitting on onto our hands and knees. You can just move your props off to the side of your mat as we come into a neutral tabletop position. So to find your neutral tabletop position, bring your shoulders over your wrists, spread your fingers nice and wide on the mat. Your knees are going to be about hip width apart, directly below your hips. Tops of the feet can be flat on the mat or you can curl your toes under for now. And once you find your tabletop position, let's start by just taking a little bit of free movement. So just start to shift your weight around on your hands, and on your knees, and on your feet in any way that feels useful to you. You can make some circles with your hips like I'm doing, or you can take a few rounds of cat-cow, maybe move in and out of child's pose a few times. Just start to greet your body, feeling your spots, waking up the spine, waking up the joints. And if you've been moving in one direction, you can go ahead and shift directions. So you can move in the opposite direction. Maybe as you do, start to incorporate a little bit more movement into some other parts of your body. Elbows, your head, your neck. Notice if your shoulder blades have some movement in them. Maybe adding a little more movement for your hips, your knees. All right, and coming back to neutral. Let's go ahead and walk your hands, one handprint in front of where they're at. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Draw your index fingers open just slightly and pressing down through the base knuckles of all four fingers and your thumbs. Curl your toes under for downward facing dog. Breathing here. If it feels good to you to go ahead and shift your hips side to side a few times, maybe pedal out your feet. Go ahead. Good, all right, then coming back to neutral. On your next inhalation, shift your shoulders over your wrist to find plank pose. And really engage your legs as if you were in a standing pose. Feel your low belly draw in. Remember your head is part of your spine, so try to keep it from falling off the cliff of your shoulders as you breathe. Building a little heat in your body. And remember that plank can be done on your forearms if you have wrist issues, or you can drop your knees down to the mat if that serves you better. Just be sure that if you bring your knees down to the mat, that you walk them far enough back that you feel the muscles in your core body engage. All right, on your next exhalation, let's lower down with control all the way down to the mat. Bring the tops of your feet down onto the mat. And on your next inhalation, lift your head and your chest. And then on your exhalation, lower down. Continue moving in this way with your own breath. The next time you inhale, stay lifted through your head and your chest. Pick up your feet, pick up your knees as well. And if you feel stable here, hover your hands off the mat, squeeze your shoulder blades together and let them drop down towards your back pockets. Continue breathing, lengthening out the spine. Face stays relaxed, back of the neck stays long. And on your next exhalation, let's go ahead and lower all the way down to the mat. Take an inhale here, and on your following exhalation, slide your right hand out to the side and roll to the right in your mouth. And then use your inhalation to bring you back to center. And on your next exhalation, slide your left hand out to the left and roll over to your left. Try to keep your inhalations and your exhalations nice and slow and smooth, making the breath Last a little bit longer than the movement so that each time you roll to one side and reach the end of your range of motion, you're still exhaling. And when you return back to center, you give yourself the full amount of time needed to complete your inhalation. Coming back to neutral, let's bring both forearms down onto the mat. Make sure your elbows are underneath your shoulders, your palms are flat on the mat or maybe the floor in front of your mat. 
and then press down through the tops of your feet and lift your knees up off the ground. Really feel that core engagement, feel your pelvic floor lift, and feel the strength in your legs as you breathe. And pressing down through your forearms, start to drag your elbows back down towards your heels and get a little more lift in the torso. If you find your mind is wandering, pick a spot on the floor in front of you and softly focus your gaze there. Alright, releasing back down onto your belly, slide your palms back so the heel of your hands are even with the low ribs. Keep your elbows in close, curl your toes under, and then press yourself back up through a neutral table and shift your hips back for downward facing dog. Breathing here. On your next inhalation, pick up your right leg, bend through your knee, and stack your hips. Continue pressing down through both hands and lift your knee a little bit higher. Good. And squaring your hips back up to the floor, extend your right leg again. And on your exhalation, step your right foot through inside of your right thumb. We'll bring both hands to the inside of your right foot and make some circles with the hips. Switching directions. Good. And leaving your left hand grounded, let's extend the right arm up toward the ceiling for a simple twist. So press down through your left hand, extend your right arm high, and then if you want to add a little more length, maybe extend your right arm toward the front of the room and keep wrapping your heart open to the right as you breathe. On your exhalation, bring your right hand down outside your right foot, step back into plank, inhale your shoulders over your wrist, and then on your exhalation, lower down either in plank or knees, chest, chin. Elbows stay nice and close to the body. Use your inhalation to lift up into cobra or up dog. And then on your exhalation, curl your toes under and press yourself back to downward facing dog. Breathing here. On your next inhalation, lift your left leg high. Bend through your knee, stack your hips. Continue breathing as you press down through both hands. And then leveling out the hips, extend your leg toward the back wall. And on your exhalation, step your left foot forward, more softly than that if you can, and bring both hands to the inside of your left foot where you make some circles with your hips on the other side. Remember, blocks can be useful for your hands if you need to bring the floor closer to your hands. Good, and then switching directions. All right, and then coming back to neutral. Bring your right hand down underneath your right shoulder. We'll take a simple twist to your left this time. So left hand rises. Keep pressing down through the right hand. Keep working your left shoulder over the right. And then if you added the extension on the other side, go ahead and reach up and over your ear. Keep pulling your left hip back in space. Continue breathing. Exhalation, bring your left hand down outside your left foot. Step your back foot up to meet the front. Inhale, half lift. Let's take a few breaths here, seeing if you can find that length in your spine. Extend the crown of your head toward the front of the room. Extend your tailbone toward the back of the room. Draw your shoulder blades together and pull your shoulders down away from your ears. Alright, 
exhale forward fold soften through your knees enough that you can bring both hands down to the floor or maybe to your blocks press down through your hands release the crown of your head and see if you can feel some engagement in your low belly inhalation come all the way up to standing sweep your arms up toward the ceiling and then on your exhalation let's go ahead and return to your mountain pose we're going to move through a few rounds of surya namaskara a i'll cue out the first one and then i'll let you do a couple on your own inhale reach up exhale fold hinge at the hips bend your knees inhale half lift find your flat back and then on your exhalation, step or hop back into flank and lower down. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take an inhale here, followed by an exhalation. And at the bottom of your exhalation, step or hop your feet to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach for the ceiling. Exhale, Tadasana. Good. Let's move through a few more like that on your own, at your own pace. I'll keep moving here so you can follow along slightly behind me if you need a reminder, but don't get too hung up on the movement. Remember that when your head goes down, you exhale. When your head comes up, you inhale. And really try to find that linkage of the breath and the movement so that each phase of the movement receives a discrete inhalation or a discrete exhalation. Push back into downward facing dog this time. Let's take a few breaths in your downward facing dog. And find a little stillness in your dog if you can. So really ground down through the base knuckles of your four fingers. Press down through your thumb. Let your heels be heavy. Feel your tailbone shifting toward the back of the room. At the bottom of your next exhalation, Let's add an external breath retention with Uddiyana Bandha, assuming that you're not pregnant or recently had abdominal surgery. So you're gonna exhale all the air out through your nose, and then draw your low belly in towards your spine, engage the pelvic floor, tuck your chin, hold the air out for just two or three seconds, and then when you feel like releasing the breath or re-engaging with the breath by inhaling, you're gonna drop your belly, release your belly, and let the air come back in through your nose. Take a few rounds like this, taking a resting breath in between if you need. Once you've completed the round that you're currently on, go ahead and release the technique. And at the bottom of your next exhalation, let's step your right foot forward inside, in between your hands, and spin your left heel down to the mat to rise up for warrior two. So extending your right arm toward the front of the room, reach your left arm back, lift up through the crown of your head, and see if you can find the outer edge of both feet as you breathe. Sinking a little lower. 
Make sure that your right knee is stacked over your right ankle. Back leg is strong. Make sure your left forward's not, your left shoulder is not creeping forward in space. Try to keep it all in one nice line. All right, on your next inhalation, let's straighten through the front leg. Weave your fingers together behind your back. Keep your chest square to the wall that you're facing. And on your exhalation, let your right hip glide, your left shoulder and your left hip wrap back. You can turn your eyes up toward the ceiling. We'll take a few breaths here without the use of your arms. Continue to find your feet as you breathe. After you've taken a couple of breaths, if you want to release into the more traditional hand posture, you can extend your left arm up, reach your right arm down somewhere below your knee. Continue breathing. Good. And then if you want to add a lengthening component, extend your left arm over your ear toward the front of the room. And if you want to add a strengthening component, pick up your right arm as if you were holding a big beach ball overhead. Inhaling back up. Let's bend through the front knee. Find your way into extended side angle. So your right forearm can come to the inside of your right leg. You can bring your right hand to the floor or to a block on the inside or the outside of your right foot. And then sweep your left arm across the horizon and hug your bicep close to your ear and open your heart up to the left as you breathe. exhalation. Let's go ahead and bring your left hand down to the mat. Unplug your back heel and from here step back into plank and either move through a vinyasa on your belly or press back to downward facing dog. bottom of your next exhalation, step your left foot in between your hands, spin your right heel down to the mat, and rise up for warrior two on the other side. And find the outer edge of both feet, sinking the hips, stacking the left knee over the left ankle. Arms are strong, shoulders are soft, eye gaze is soft off the middle finger of the left hand. On your next inhalation, straighten through your front leg. Weave your fingers together behind your back, but take the non-habitual grip so you're at the pinkies on the bottom. Square your chest to the wall in front of you, and on your exhalation, your left hip glides, your right hip and your right shoulder wrap back. You can turn your eyes up toward the ceiling. You can look down toward your left foot if it feels better on your neck. Continue breathing. After a couple of breaths, if you want to release into the more traditional hand posture, extending your left hand down and right hand up, go ahead. Continue breathing. If you want to lengthen, right arm extends. If you want to strengthen, left arm lifts. Find that beach ball. Continue breathing. Inhaling up, on your exhalation, bend through your front knee. Take the variation of side angle that you practiced on the other side. All right, exhaling, unwind. Bring both hands down to the mat, step back into plank and move through your vinyasa, exhaling down, inhaling up, exhaling back. Bottom of your neck.
next exhalation. Let's step your right foot forward and spin your right heel down to the mat. Walk your hands over to the inside of your right foot and pivot to find a 45 degree angle with your right foot. And then from here, let's go ahead and inhale to the center. And on your next exhalation, shift your weight so that you find a transverse lunge on the other side. And just keep moving between these two shapes with your breath, inhaling to the center, and then exhaling to one side, adjusting your feet as needed as you move and breathe. Once you've gone to both sides an equal number of times, take your time. We'll find our way back to the middle of the mat. Use your inhalation to come all the way up to standing. Bring your hands together behind your head and bending through your knees, turn your toes out at about a 45 degree angle. And on your next exhalation, let's start making a big circle down to your right. And then use your inhalation to bring you back up. And on your next exhalation, start making another big circle. And then inhale back up. Once you've completed three rounds in the first direction, go ahead and switch directions. completed your third round in the second direction. Come back up to standing, heel toe your feet a little bit wider, pigeon toe your feet in just slightly, inhale, lift your chest, exhale, forward. So your hands can stay grounded on the mat. You can turn your toes so that they face in the same direction as your heels and walk your hands back. That helps you deepen into the shape. Continue breathing. Here, let's walk your hands forward. Turn the toes of your right foot to at a 45 degree angle. We'll sink into a static variation of the transverse lunge. So walk your hands over to the right and take a few breaths here with the outer edge of your foot still grounded before you move into your favorite variation. Good. And then if you like to modify, maybe spin the toes of your left foot up to face the ceiling, shift your hands around, maybe able to drop your hips a little lower and lift your chest more. If you want to take the load out from your hands, you bring your hands to Anjali Mudra and balance with no hands. If you have the bind and you want to reach your right arm around the outside of your right leg, reach back with your left hand. You can go ahead and give that variation a try as well. Continue breathing, taking a lot of weight into the outer edge of your right hip and your right foot. Good. And then from here, release both hands back down to the mat. Pivot to face the front of the mat. Take a breath here in your runner's lunge. And then on your exhalation, step back into your vinyasa, or press back to downward facing dog. Breathing here. At the bottom of your next exhalation, step your left foot forward, spin your right heel down to the mat, and then pivot to face the right edge of your mat. Bring both hands down to the ground. We're going to find that transverse lunge again to your left this time toward the front of your mat. And then from here, we'll start moving again, inhaling into the center, and on your exhalation, dropping over to the right. And if you feel really stable here and you want to move without your hands, go ahead, 
You can bring your hands together. Provide a little resistance between your hands as you pull and continuing to move with your breath. So exhaling one side, inhaling back to center. And if you want to explore what you're doing with your feet, feel free to go ahead and do so. Once you've completed an equal number on both sides, we'll come back to center. Inhale all the way up to standing. Bring your hands to your hips. Heel toe your feet in and sit down as if you were riding a horse for God's pose. Weave your fingers together. Press your palms down toward the floor. And on your inhalation, lift your arms up. And then on your exhalation, sit down a little lower and press the energy back out and down. Continue moving in this way with your own breath. bottom of your inhalation, return to standing, heel toe your feet out, turn your toes in just slightly, weave your fingers together behind your back, inhale, lift the chest, exhale, forward fold. Soften through your shoulders as you work your hands away from your sacrum toward the wall in front of you. Allow the top of your head to drop down toward the floor and just continue breathing. both hands down to the mat. Adjust your feet, turn in your left toes out at a 45 degree angle, and then walk your hands over to the left. We'll set up for the static variation of the transverse lunge on the other side. And really leave your outer foot grounded for a couple of breaths. And then if you'd like to adjust into your favorite position, Go ahead and play around, move through the gears in any way that feels useful to you. All right, coming back to center, release whatever you're doing with your hands. Walk your hands around to find your runner's lunge facing the front of your mat. Take a breath here, and then when you're ready, let's go ahead and step back into plank. If you want to move through a vinyasa, go ahead. And once you find your way back to downward facing dog, see if you can recover that pattern of Samavritti breathing, equal fluctuation making the inhalations and the exhalations last the same amount of time. All right, on your inhalation, shift your shoulders forward over your wrist to find plank pose again. And on your exhalation, lower down with control, either in plank or knees, chest, chin bringing both elbows down onto the mat. Let's return to Sphinx Pose again. We'll lift up through the crown of your head. Continue breathing. Good, then either stay here and continue with your Sphinx Pose, or if you wanna to move to Dhanurasana, you can bend through your knees, reach back for the outer edge, of your ankles 
and then use the strength of your legs to press your feet up toward the ceiling. Use the strength of your arms to lift your head and your chest. Continue breathing. Try to keep your knees from splaying out. Exhaling back down. Let's go ahead and bring both hands down to the mat. Walk the heels of your hands back until they're about level with your low ribs. And on your next exhalation, press yourself right up into plank and shift your hips back for downward facing dog. Right at the bottom of your next exhalation, step or hop your feet forward a little wider than your hips and sink yourself down for garland pose malasana. So let's leave our hands grounded for today and really just concentrate on letting your tailbone drop, letting your chest and the crown of your head lift up toward the ceiling. Find a spot on the floor in front of you that's not moving and softly focus your gaze there. from here. Let's shift forward into crow or crane. So if you have bakasana in your practice, remember your knees come up high into your armpits. Spread your fingers nice and wide, hands about shoulder width apart, and start to come into your arm balance. Maybe focusing, if you're comfortable here, on squeezing your feet together, maybe even straightening the arms. If you're newer to the posture, from your squat, you're going to roll forward. You're going to bend your elbows and press your elbows into the creases of your knees. Squeeze your legs back onto your elbows, engage your low belly, and shifting your eye gaze further forward than you probably think, tip your weight forward, taking some weight onto your hands until maybe your feet come up off the ground. Once you're in your deepest expression of the shape, take five to seven breaths. And then when you've had enough, you can go ahead and step or hop back into plank and either move through a vinyasa or just press yourself back to downward facing dog. All right, from here, let's go ahead and lower back down onto your knees. We'll sit back down in Vajrasana, Thunderbolt pose. We're gonna set up now for either headstand, forearm stand or dolphin. So if you don't feel comfortable inverting at home or you're not inverting for other reasons today, dolphin is a great shape to take. It's basically downward facing dog on your forearms. Press down through your forearms and shift your shoulders back away from your elbows. Your heels will be heavy and release the crown of your head. Take 10 breaths here and then return to your thunderbolt pose. Take a few resting breaths and then go ahead and repeat. If you're inverting today, I'm going to demonstrate headstand. So to come into headstand safely, we want to either in the middle of the room or if you need to shift your mat over to the wall, go ahead and take a moment to do so. And we'll begin just by bringing your thumb to the space between your eyebrows and then reach up to the crown of your head, toward the crown of your head with your middle finger. You may find that your middle finger will land just in front of the crown of your head, and as long as you don't have any neck issues, that's the part of your head you want making contact with the floor. Having said that, 95% or more of your weight is actually going to be on your forearms. So we want to keep our elbows about shoulder width apart, and we want to weave our fingers together, tucking your little pinkies side by side so that you don't grind down into your pinkies as you come into an inversion. So there are at least two schools of thought here, one of which is that you tuck the back of your head against your hands. The other one is that you make more of a cup shape and you create a little bit of space so that when you bring the crown of your head down, 
you have your hands a little bit further behind the back of your head. So it's up to you, whatever variation feels better to you. And then maybe just start, if you're playing around either at the wall or in the middle of the room, by walking your feet together. And then from here, you can practice lifting one leg and then the other. Each time you do, maybe take a few breaths. Or if you're coming right up into a headstand, come on up. Anyway, one leg, two legs, bent legs. And once you're here, flex your feet as if you were standing on the ceiling. And see if you can slow down your breathing. So take as long as you like in the shape, and then when you're ready, if you have handstand in your practice, maybe see if you can practice lowering down slowly with control. And then once you're down, take a few breaths in your child's pose, or maybe return to a seated pose, but draw some. Now rest your hands on your lap, close your eyes, and just take a moment to feel the effects of the inversion. Remember, we want to be really careful with our head and our neck for coming up into headstand. And if it doesn't feel appropriate for you today, you should just feel free to skip. All right, so from your seated position, let's shift now into Viras in a hero's pose. So for hero's pose, you're going to bring your knees together. You're going to separate your feet and you're going to sit down between your heels. Now for a lot of us, your bottom may not come all the way down to the mat. And if you find that your bottom doesn't come down to the mat, take a block or a small pillow and just slide it between your hips, preferably orienting the block this way so that you can sit down and rest both sit bones on the block. Wherever you're at, let's go ahead and extend both arms out to the side. And we'll cross our right arm over our left, maybe grabbing for the opposite shoulder, maybe double crossing your hand, sliding the fingers of your left hand into your right palm. Once you're here, tuck your chin, press your fingers up toward the ceiling, push the blades of your hands, the blades of your forearms rather, toward the front of the room. And then on your next inhalation, let's go ahead and reach your arms up. This time, we'll cross the left arm over the right, Maybe grabbing for the opposite shoulders, maybe moving right into your brood arms. Press your fingers up toward the ceiling, press your forearms toward the front of the room. Continue breathing. in the bind. Let's go ahead and bring your hands down to the floor. We're going to move back into Supta Virasana. So if you're on your block, be careful. You may even want to slide it out from under you now that you have the support of your hands. And you start to walk your hands back, find some lengthening in your quads. Maybe today this will be good enough for you and your Supta Virasana. Maybe you want to lower down onto your forearms. Or maybe you can lower all the way down onto the back of your head. Or maybe even bring your shoulder blades down to the Try not to let your knees splay open and breathe here. All right, and using the strength of your arms, go ahead and press yourself back up. We're going to lengthen out the legs. So either press one leg back and then the other, or maybe Curl your toes under and press yourself back to downward facing dog. Right on your next inhalation, let's pick up your right leg again and bend through your knee and stack your hips again. All right, then coming back to neutral with your hips, extend your right leg out behind you, and on your exhalation. Bring your right knee down behind and outside of your right wrist. Your left foot's 
going to walk back your whole leg, in fact, to help square your pelvis to the mat. And then walk your hands back towards your front leg. Lift up through the crown of your head and see if you can find that up dog shape with your upper body. Finding a little movement in your thoracic spine. Shoulder blades drawn together, chest is lifting. And then on your exhalation, let's go ahead and lower down either onto a block with your forehead or maybe onto your hands or maybe even extending your hands forward and releasing your forehead down onto your mat. Breathe in here. both hands back up toward your front leg and bring your right hand down to the middle of your mat press down through your hand and then bending through your left leg reach back for the inside of your left foot using your left hand draw your heel towards your outer left hip as if you're trying to bring the soles of your feet together eventually and then adjust your hand if it's available to you in the shoulder so that you can spin your fingers toward the front of the room stacking your elbows over your it may not work for everybody. If not, then just stay with the variation you grab for the inside of your leg. Continue breathing. All right, and then releasing the bind, whatever you're doing with your back leg, go ahead and let your right, left foot come back down to the mat. Bring your left forearm down to the floor so that your left hand is close to your right knee. And then from here, start to open up to your right. And you can bring your right hand to your sacrum. You can extend up toward the ceiling if that feels all right, or if you can do it without distorting too much through your hips, wrap your right arm around your low back and maybe bind on the big toe of your right foot with your right hand. Wherever you're at, continue breathing, traction your left elbow over toward the left side of your mat to help deepen your twist. exhalation unwind bring both hands down to the mat curl your back toes under and from here press yourself back adjust your feet it might feel good to pick up your right leg kick your knee out a little bit maybe stacking your hips again and if you have Urdhva Vashistas and a wild thing to practice you can drop your right foot behind your left keeping your left leg straight bend through your right knee and open your heart up toward the ceiling as you breathe Coming back through center, let's go ahead and turn to your downward facing dog. Find your breath. On your next inhalation, pick up your left leg, bend through the knee and stack your hips. And then coming back. Through center, square your hips to the floor, extend your left leg, and on your exhalation, draw your left knee behind and outside your left wrist. Walk your right leg back to square off your hips, and then walk your hands back to find that lift, that up dog shape with your torso, so that you feel the weight of your torso shifting back into your pelvis. Continue breathing. Good. And then from here, let's come forward to find a variation of sleeping pigeon that works for you on this side. So maybe bringing your hands down to your forehead down to your hands or to a block, or maybe walking your hands forward and letting your forehead come down to your mat.
back towards your front leg. Bring your left hand back to the middle of your mat. Bend through your right knee. Reach back to the inside of your right foot with your right hand and use your arm to draw your right hand, heel and foot toward the outside of your right hip. If you practice stacking your elbow over your wrist on the other side, maybe give it a try here. Continue breathing. Let's go ahead and release the back leg. We'll bring the right forearm down to the mat. The right hand's gonna be close to your left knee. And then start to open your chest up toward the left, bringing your left hand toward the sacrum, or maybe reaching up toward the ceiling, if that feels okay on your shoulder and your neck, or maybe wrapping around with your left hand to bind on the big toe of your left foot as you breathe. Remember, what you do with your hand is less important then getting your left shoulder stacked over your right shoulder. So we want to keep opening the heart, keeping the pelvis more or less square to the ground. And don't forget to press down through your forearm and traction your right elbow toward the right side of your mat to help you deepen into the twist. All right, from here, Let's go ahead and unwind. We're gonna bring both hands down to the mat. Curl your back toes under and press yourself back into downward facing dog. And then from here, let's come forward into seat. So any way you wanna transition, you can hop through or you can just let your knees come down to the mat, shift them off to the side, and then shift over onto your bottom. Right, so I'm going to turn sideways so you can see what I'm doing with my body. I'm going to bring the heels of your feet up close to your body. Feet are going to be about hip width apart. And then you're going to bring your hands down beside your hips alongside the mat. On your next inhalation, press down through your feet, lift your hips high, and at the same time lift your hands so at the top of your inhalation, your hands come down to the floor behind you and your hips down. And then on the exhalation, lower back down. And continue moving in this way. And then the next time you inhale and lift up, leave your hand, hips high as you exhale and suck your low belly down toward your spine. Once your air is out, lower your hips slowly down toward the mat. And when your hips touch down, go ahead and release your belly and let the air come back in through your lungs. Take a resting breath here if you like, or you can come right up on your inhalation, back into another back. And then exhale all the air out, suck your low belly down in toward your spine, engage your pelvic floor. Once the air is out, lower down to the mat. Once you touch down, release Uddiyana Bandha, let the air come back in through your nose, and repeat a few more times. Once you've completed this round, let's go ahead and bring your hands back down beside your hips. And from here, we'll set up for a static variation of bridge. So, 
pressing your palms down onto the floor, maybe grabbing for your ankles if you like that variation. Go ahead and press down through your feet to lift your hips, and once you're up, you can walk your shoulders in towards one another. You can hold onto your ankles, leave your palms on the floor. You can weave your fingers together behind your low back and press your pinkies down into the floor to lift a little bit higher. Continue breathing. And then once you feel like you've had enough, lower your hips back down to the floor. It might feel good to let your knees knock together, or maybe window wiper your knees side to side as you breathe. Let's go ahead and repeat bridge, and if you feel like you'd like to press up into Urdhva Dhanurasana, bow pose, you can go ahead and do so, or you can take a more passive variation of bridge just by lifting your hips and sliding a block underneath your sacrum, letting your hips just rest heavy as you breathe here. So whatever variation is going to work for you, go ahead and set yourself up, press down through your feet, and if you're coming into Urdhva Dhanurasana, Bring your hands beside your head, take them a little bit wider than your shoulders and turn your fingers out slightly, especially if you have tight shoulders and you want to create some more space here. And then press them through your feet, maybe come to rest on the top of your head as you sort out your hands. And then when you're ready, press yourself up. You can press up onto your toes like I'm doing if you like, you can leave your heels grounded. Try to let your head relax, tractioning out your neck as you continue to press your chest forward toward the heels of your hands. All right, now when you're ready, let's go ahead and lower back down. Take your time. And once you come down, you can feel free to work a few more back bends. You can even pause the video if you like to take a few more rounds. Or if you feel like you've had enough, Let's go ahead and extend both legs long and zip up your legs so that you feel the ball mounts of your big toes pressing against one another, the side of the ball mounts of your big toes. Spin your femurs internally so that you feel your thighs pressing down toward the mat. So an internal rotation will help to create that feeling of pressing your big toes together. And then reaching overhead, I'm not sure if you can see it, but weave your fingers together. And then extend your hands long with your palms toward the wall behind your head. And breathe here. Using the strength of your arms and the strength of your legs to lengthen out your spine. And once your breathing is fully settled back down to normal, we're going to take a few more rounds of an external breath retention, practicing Tadaka Mudra this time, which means empty pool. So on your exhalation, you're going to exhale all the air out. You're going to suck the low belly down into your spine. Hold the air out two, three, four, five seconds. Not so long that you feel like you're going to gasp when you need to breathe in. And then release your low belly first and let the air come back in. Take a resting breath if you like after that or just going right back into your next round. Once you've completed the round, you're currently on. Let's go ahead and release the bind, soften through your legs. 
and then from here, bend your knees, and come back to the middle of your mat, or at least I'll come back to the middle of my mat. And take a moment to check in and see if there's anything that you have left to do in your practice before you move into your final rest. So if you'd like to take some kind of additional inversion or work on something where your body's still warm, go ahead and take a moment to do what you need to do. You might even want to pause the video for a second. But if you're ready to move right into your Shavasana, you go ahead and do so, maybe stopping along the way to take a happy baby or a twist on your back. Otherwise, if you're coming into your final rest, let's go ahead and grab for socks or a blanket or anything else you need. And then lower down onto your mat. Remember, and you can stretch out this Shavasana as long as you want. So if you want to pause the video and set a timer for 10 minutes, you can go ahead. We'll be here for about five or six minutes. So if that feels like it's going to be about the right amount of time for you, then just settle in when you're ready. Close your eyes. And remember that this is the part of the practice where you get a chance to absorb and integrate the work that you've done. And there's nothing that you need to do to make that happen. So if anything, just see if you can allow yourself to shift into the role of the observer. Just watching whatever arises moment by moment. Noticing all the space that you created. Or even better still, just do nothing at all and just enjoy the fruit of your practice.
attention back to your breath. Slowly begin to deepen your inhalations and lengthen your exhalations. And when you feel ready to add back some movement, go ahead and wiggle your fingers and your toes. And maybe start to gradually add back any movement in any way that feels good and useful to you. And when you're ready, roll to one side and using the strength of your arms, letting your head come up last, we'll return to a seated position. We're going to set up now for pranayama, so if it's useful to you to add a little height in the form of a block or a bolster underneath your hips, then go ahead and set yourself up and find a suitable seated position, one that's going to allow you to rest comfortably with a relatively neutral upright spine. And of course, if you need to switch the cross of your legs at any time, you should feel free to do so. So we'll begin today by just letting your hands rest comfortably on your lap and close your eyes. Allow your low belly to release. And let your tongue come down from the roof of your mouth so that you can bring the tip of your tongue right where the back of your top teeth meet the roof of your mouth, right along the gum line there, practicing what's known as Jiva Mudra. And then bringing your attention to your breath as it enters and exits at the tip of your nose. Just begin to observe your breathing and the qualities you feel as the air comes in through your nostrils and out through your nostrils. Not doing anything to manipulate the breath at this time. Next inhalation, bring your attention to the sensations that you feel as the air moves in through your left nostril. And on your exhalation, shift your attention to the sensations as the air moves out through your right nostril. Stay with the right nostril for the inhalation, the subsequent inhalation. And then on your next exhalation, shift your attention back to your left nostril, just feeling the sensations as the breath exits through your left nostril. And continue breathing in this way, shifting your attention from one nostril to the other after each inhalation. Assuming that all of this is going okay, the next time you inhale through your left nostril, imagine a blue thread of energy traveling up from a spot about two inches below your left nostril, through your left nostril, up to the center of your forehead. And on your exhalation, imagine a golden thread of energy traveling down from the center of your forehead, 
through your right nostril to a space about two inches below your right nostril. Stay with that golden thread of energy as you inhale through your right nostril, letting it travel up with your breath to the center of your forehead. And then on your next exhalation, again, see the blue thread of energy traveling down from the center of your forehead through your left nostril to a spot about two inches below your left nostril. And just continue breathing using the visualization as you go. The next time you exhale through your left nostril, release the technique, release the visualization, and bring your palms together in prayer position, Anjali Mudra at the level of your heart. Let's take one final moment for the practice of gratitude and see if you can bring into your heart and into your mind whatever it is that you feel grateful for and see if you can connect with it in such a way that you can start to feel that feeling of gratitude in your physical We'll close today by chanting Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Feel free to join me as much or as little as you like. May all beings everywhere be free from suffering. Namaste. Thanks for sharing your practice, everyone, today. I hope it serves you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. You can email me through the studio or uh, through the contact information on my YouTube page. Thanks a lot, and I hope everyone has a great day.